This video is going to be a quick explanation of some really important organizations called internet registries. So these are usually non-profits, often associated with governments, and they control the allocation of internet numbers. Primarily, for our purposes, we're going to talk about it in terms of IP addresses and domain names. So hopefully you know what they are at this stage. So internet numbers refers to IP addresses and domain names, despite them maybe not technically being numbers, but that's just the overarching term. Also other things like, or minor things like time zones, if we're to standardize the time zones, something called autonomous system numbers, AS numbers, and the codes that are used to refer to protocols, they have unique codes. So various things which are quite important and especially important to be standardized. So the main ones you would have maybe come across and I've mentioned in previous videos are these five. These are called regional internet registries. So one for almost each continent or kind of each continent roughly. And these are all under the authority of a broader organization called IANA, which itself is under the uh, like overarching control of ICANN, which used to be run by the US Department of Commerce. It's not anymore, but essentially these are very large organizations and it's all about distributing to different areas. IANA itself stands for Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. So that's where the internet numbers comes into this equation. So a lot of this revolves around the need to ensure that certain things are kept unique, especially IP addresses and domain names. An IP address is meant to be linked to a single device, so if you type in an IP address you'll be able to connect to that device. Same with domain names, you can't have two companies with the same domain name, it just it undermines the whole system. So it's important that these organisations keep things unique. And like so many things in the internet, this works in a hierarchical manner usually. So IANA have, let's say IANA have all of the domain names and all of the IP addresses and it's up to them to actually distribute it to people, but often via several registries. So first of all, IANA will give a set range of IP addresses to each regional registry and also a set range of domain names. So .com is meant to be an American one um, and so on, and obviously the country codes as well. So then once the regional authorities have this set range of internet numbers, they can then distribute it to people, but often via several smaller registries. That's where the hierarchical sense comes into it. Let's talk about it in terms of IP addresses. So each of them will have a set range of IP addresses and it's important that they are tied to different areas of the world because an IP address is meant to locate a device geographically. So you can look at an IP address and go, okay, that belongs to North America because it was allocated by Aaron uh, and so on. So Aaron have a set range of IP addresses. They can give it to national internet registries. So one for US, one for Canada, in Europe, uh, different countries. So the UK will have one and the regional registry will give a set subset of their pool to an individual country and a set domain name as well, so .uk, .es, .de for Germany. And so it's all about allocating a smaller set of this overall pool. Once the national registry has that range, they can then give it to either people directly or via internet service providers. So Virgin Media will be assigned a set range of IP addresses, so will Sky, so will BT, and it's up to them to actually assign it to their customers. The main message from this slide is that these organizations are sort of nested within each other. So they're all internet registries technically, but some are larger than others. And it's all about ensuring that things are kept unique so that the IP addresses assigned to North America are different to the ones assigned to India. They've got to be different otherwise the routing will just completely break down. This is regarding IP addresses and it's a very similar process for domain names and the other internet numbers as well. So this is part of the tree I showed you from the DNS video and I said in that video that each of these subdomains is actually operated by an organisation and that organisation is an internet registry. So for the top level for root there are only 13 servers actually, there are only 13 DNS servers for root because as I explained in that video it's not really needed as much as you would think. We don't, we don't contact these servers very often but there are 13 trusted authorities, trusted internet registries which operate these 13 servers. So NAS has got one, VeriSign which is a very big one has got two, so VeriSign has got two, very lucky, University of Maryland, Department of Defense and eight others. So very large companies um, usually non-profits or independent companies which just are there to maintain the servers essentially. In terms of some of the top level domains, 
.com and .net are operated by VeriSign again. VeriSign are quite a big player in this field. They also are used a lot in or use a lot for certificates and signatures. So this name crops up quite a lot. Uh, so they have DNS servers for these two, which are going to be used the most. Also, org is by a company called Your Public Interest Registry, and then Nominet is for the UK. And of course, you have second level domains, which are also going to be operated potentially by different registries. So lots of registries involved here, again, in a hierarchical manner. And this means as we have another branch coming off to the second level domains, Nominet can choose who is going to operate .co or .gov. So they have the control over it essentially, so they're passing on the role to a smaller registry if they don't want to be in charge of it themselves. Finally, just because these registries operate the domain name servers for each of these subdomains doesn't mean they're actually selling the subdomains. So they might actually just give a set amount or sell a set amount to other domain name registries like GoDaddy, which doesn't actually operate any DNS servers as far as I know. They'll just buy a set amount of domain names from VeriSign or from Nominet and then pass it on to customers. So again, it's a lot about passing stuff on, but ensuring that they're kept consistent by being operated by a trusted company.